This is the artiste with Ivy Reese, and today my special guest is Carolyn Bennett. She is a comedian, television screenwriter, and her first full-length novel, Please Stand By, just launched to rave reviews in Alberta in September of last month, and is curr currently number four on the bestseller list. Carolyn is the writer, was the writer of TVO's Blood, Sweat and Tape for Ontario's Telefast Awards. In the 90s and 2000s, she has worked for CBC and has been a staff writer for This Hour's 22 Minutes. She has been a columnist for iWeekly in the mid-1990s and her own com had her own comedy special on CBC's Comics. Most recently, she has been active as a play play playwright and has been, her works have been produced across Canada and the United States. In 2013, Bennett received the TIFF Screenwriting Intense Jury Prize for her screenplay from the Mac and Watson Springtime Referendum Show. Currently, she hosts her own reading series, Bright Lit Big City, in the East End at High Root Fine Ethiopian Cuisine. We'll tell you more about that in the show. And today we're going to be asking, is social media making us narcissistic? And we're going to take a look at the state of Canadian broadcasting. Everyone, please welcome Carolyn Bennett. Okay, where's the audience? What happened to the... <laughs> what happened to Dave? I'm not Dave sure. He left. <laughs> now, Good are you here. the MP? No, I'm not the MP. So for but those who read the calendar, I should say <laughs> that you are not the MP, Carolyn Bennett. <laughs> Although, please consider me to be the MP because I need the book sales. Yeah. You know, I, if, when people uh, mistake me for the MP, I get very happy. I went to the Gladstone Library, Toronto uh, reference, Toronto Library, and at the Gladstone um, branch. Yeah. Because I was wondering if the book had come out and if the Toronto Public Library had purchased it. So I, <laughs> I asked, you know, I asked the person behind the desk and she looked it up and she said, yeah, we did get it. And she said, congratulations. She said, I thought I recognized you. And I was feeling, oh, pretty good, you know. <laughs> I said, yeah, you know, it's my first novel coming out. And she said, you know, that's really great. You know, I know you're so busy and I don't know how you do it. And good luck with the election. <laughs> and, and, I just, I, and I just said thank you like yeah. what am I going to say yeah. you know but it's like I get that all the time and I'm just too late in life to change my name to it, ginger beef or whatever I, I have to be Carolyn Bennett yeah well with all the accolades it wouldn't do you very much good <laughs> I know I know like people well, people think I'm the MP that they think I'm a super achiever well I was asked and I said well I'm not sure <laughs> and then I'm like well maybe and then I'm driving home one day last yeah. week and I see the signs right next to my riding yeah. in the West End and I'm like Carolyn Bennett <laughs> I'm <laughs> like she is the MP <laughs> and then so I send you an email right, and I say like, on good luck on the election because <laughs> I'd already sent and I send to the calendar you know yeah. I'm interviewing a member of parliament <laughs> on all of this and I had it posted on that channel.com I'm like good luck on the election you write me back I'm not the MP <laughs> I'm not and the I'm MP. like oh sorry <laughs> It's the exact same spelling and, yeah. you know, but, but same pronunciation, did, too. same pronunciation. We have the same middle name. I've met. The, Are you serious? Yes. Anne. I mean, it's so British waspy, boring, Carolyn Ann Bennett, you know, but uh, hopefully she's not watching. I mean, it's a oh, great I, name. No, I, I hope I hope she is watching right <laughs> no. now. Uh, she's a wonderful woman. I know she was elected once again. I think this is her seventh term. In, well, I in was Parliament. worried if I'd be interviewing you <laughs> and you had lost. I, I know. I, I, was, I was like, I'm going to have to get her. Yeah, exactly. I'd have my uh, No my longer speech. a member of Parliament. <laughs> well, Ralph Goodale, he's no longer a member of Parliament. And he's, been, he's the minister of everything. Like, mm -hmm. what, what are the Liberals going to do without him? But uh, he'll, he'll be okay. He can do this. What is the world going to do with Trump in the White House? But thank God Trudeau won. Thank God we live in Canada and uh, <laughs> we're not discussing it. Yeah, <laughs> because it makes my head spin. Yes. Now, um, your book, well, let's start off with this. Okay. I was blown away. There's a cool story behind it. It was sitting in your, ma your manuscript, was sitting in your drawer for a few years. And it, you just did the pre-party, pre-launch in Alberta. Right. And on September 29th, uh, we'll put it up on the screen. But you were number four. On the bestseller list, and I have to say, one ahead of Margaret Atwood's The Testaments. Well, unbelievable. I know. All I can say is uh, thank God for family and friends. Yeah. <laughs> because they came to the launch, and I guess they, they cleaned out the, uh, the stock in, in the uh, bookstore. So I feel very fortunate. And yeah, that blew me away when I saw that uh, list. 
That's uh, beautiful. That's very cool. But that's with Audrey's Books, an independent bookstore in uh, Alberta. But I think it was for all of Edmonton that week. Yeah, it is because um, Kim Kaye, the yeah. other author, I think yeah. you've seen her interview. She's um, she's from Winnipeg. Okay. And um, and there too, her book um, shot up to yeah. bestseller list. Right, a but few it's only for ago. the week. You know, yeah. I'm sure it's uh, dead and forgotten already. Yeah. I don't think it has to do with the bookstores. So I think it's there. Yeah. Yeah, it's numbers, data. Uh, I'm sure it's, maybe it's number nine right now. We should. Oh, check. that would be okay. Yeah, we're that only a couple right. weeks past the yeah. 29th. Yeah. Uh, so, as a writer, uh, tell tell me a little bit about um, your journey in Canadian broadcasting. Canadian broadcasting. Well. I started as a stand-up comic. I, I worked for Yuck Yucks for uh, many years, touring, uh, touring the country. And I was uh, pretty much a raving alcoholic at the time. <laughs> and the main It happens. Th yeah, it happens. And the main character in this book actually has a, a quite the alcohol problem. Are there similarities? Of course there are. When you, start, when, you, when you write a debut novel, mostly you're writing from your own experience. I, I, I think I'm, so. I'm that's pretty a, sure. That's a good yeah, a analysis. Yeah. Like it's, semi-autobiographical however it is fiction so people are thinking you know did this really happen did that really happen it is fiction yes so incidents are grossly exaggerated except for the murder right <laughs> <laughs> the murder is all true you know the, yeah. the, the multi-murder uh, that's all true yeah. I, I did do that yeah. um but but yeah it is fiction so and uh, as far as broadcasting I was very lucky because I knew as a comedian, um, either I was going to tour the rest of my life in Canada and the States and be on the road, or I was going to take that comedy mind elsewhere. And I've always been drawn to stories and, and scripting and, and that sort of thing. I love putting words in people's mouths so I don't have to speak. Yes. One of the reasons I write is so I don't have to speak. But you are a great speaker. At times. Other times, I did a reading last night. It was so embarrassing. I was reading at the, uh, <laughs> the Pivot uh, reading yeah, series. Yeah. And it's pretty intense there. It's, it's intense. It was <laughs> lovely, right? But I crack open the book and I realize, my God, I think I need glasses now. Oh. And it was so dim in there. I was oh. like looking at the print and I can't read this. This is really embarrassing. Until finally said, somebody said, why don't you go over to where there's more light? What a difference that made. You yeah. know, just like put some light on it. And, you know, I was still kind of struggling, but I realized I got to get those cheap old glasses. I was just going to say, things. they have, I saw a yeah. commercial, you know, you put them on and they have the magnifying <laughs> and the light. <laughs> So you can and the light. Yeah, they have the light above and they magnify. <laughs> so you can do your knitting, you know, your knit, the stitch work. You can sit in bed and not disturb your partner. You can do it all. And it just, you know, you can literally do the fuse box, no problem. Oh. And it's like, you know, $19.99 a pair. Order your second one for free, but additional <laughs> charges apply. Perfect. <laughs> you, you should get some money for that ad you just gave. Yeah, them. I know. Yeah. I, if, I could, if only I could remember the name. <laughs> yeah. that would, I think that would be quite, uh, you know, a, quite a trademark <laughs> kind of for me to be using well, those. Yeah, they're, I'll get they're them to sponsor big... my readings. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to find the link. I'll send Thank it you. to you. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a cut from yeah. the sales. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, that's really cool. What was I going to... Yeah, well, you were saying that that is one of the reasons you write. You yeah. like writing so other people can speak. And, yeah. and that's cool when I found out that you were writing speeches for the, the Gemini Awards. And, uh, do I actually uh, um, I did remarks for the Premier no. of Ontario. Oh, yes, Premier um, Dalton McGinty. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, Mr. McGinty, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, speechwriter for a while. Um, and then I worked for the Lieutenant Governor. So in a way, I kind of have danced around the um, MP the, circle, the, the MP sort of the public servant uh, life, because I come from a tradition of public servants. You know, my father and my grandfather was actually um, waterfront commissioner in, in Toronto, oh, wow. which shocks me. I never knew the man. He died before I was born. He probably thought Carolyn's coming into this world. I'm checking out. You know, <laughs> well, he missed a lot. Oh, he's probably watching from above. Oh. Well, how do you think social media is making us narcissistic? I mean, do you address this in your book? Because I know there's a lot of dark, satirical humor you were telling me in the yeah. novel. Please yeah. stand by. Yeah. And no, I, no, I don't, because this is pre-social media. This oh. happens in 2000. Okay. So it's very much driven by uh, television. And, and there is kind of the shift into social media at the time and the internet and everything. But, for example, I, I have a, a Facebook page. 
that's it. Yes. Um, I don't have like friends per se. Like if you go yeah. to my page, you have to like the page. I uh, I get overwhelmed by social media. I, I me too. But yeah. I thought it was just me. No, no, no. People are telling me. Uh, like I did talk to a publicist about the book, and I just thought I I don't want a publicist. You know, I I know I should as a writer and as a you know somebody who's trying to sell my work, but I'm just I don't. The thing about well, social media. Well, I was going to ask you yeah. based on how well your book's done. I was well, going to ask if you. I read your Wikipedia page and I thought she must have a publicist. No. Oh wow. No, no, no. I I have friends who have helped me out over the years, That's but um, the thing about social media is it making us narcissistic. Society is becoming atomized. Like we're all little little units of humanity. And I think as units of humanity, we all have to be entrepreneurial. I think this is, you know, with the... Yeah, the entrepreneur thing is, is everyone has a side gig, everyone's an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's almost, I think that feeds into, it's a, rather a result of our economy. Yeah. Because it's no longer possible to survive on one income, two incomes, yeah. and even two incomes. And everybody needs a side hustle. And everyone's trying to be an entrepreneur. But I, it's, all, it's also a mindset. Mm. So we've gone from institutions that have taken care of us and that we've relied on for like centuries to, to like a, a relativistic explosion of you're all on your own. Yeah. Each individual, you're on your own. So you have to have a voice to be heard and to um, assert yourself. And, and that's why you get the gig economy and that sort of thing. It brings a lot of freedom to the individual, a hell of a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it can be alienating because we're all splintered and we're all striving for something. So there, there is still, um, uh, uh, God, what am I trying to say? Well, uh, there still are institutions but even those institutions are crumbling because of what, of the explosion of relativism. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's in really great observations. Uh, I was going to say, in a sense, that and then you you said we're fragmented. Yeah. I was going to say that it, it feeds into you know we're more the isolation aspect, yeah. which of course is increasing depression, and anxiety mm -hmm. levels. Yeah. Because we're more connected. Uh, you know, it's nothing new to say. We're more connected than ever, but and people less connected. are so less connected with each other and even yep. perhaps less connected to themselves. I mean, uh, my interview with David uh, Tucker, where we talked about the aesthetics of media and fake news, was interesting because one of the slides we had, we talked about how we are living through the lens. Mm -hmm. and, and then there was, a, one, for me, one of the most compelling images was Hillary Clinton. And you had her from the 2000, when she ran in, I believe, 2006. And then again, when she was running in 2016, and, or it was 2008, 2016, either way. And the older one from 2008, you see a photo of her, and she's reaching forward, and she's like thronged by people, you know, mm -hmm. shaking hands. She's mm -hmm. her surrounded mm -hmm. by a throng of individuals. And then the other, the other image from 2016, when she was running, is, is shocking, because she's literally got her back like, so there's the barricade and a number of people, and she's facing them and, you know, waving or smiling. And every single person behind the barricade has their back to her, holding up their cell phones, mm -hmm. obviously, right. to get her yeah. in the yep. image. Mm -hmm. But it is, you've got to see it in its um, juxtaposo juxtaposition be beside each other, and uh, it's jarring. It's a jarring image. And, and we are experiencing the world through the lens. And then how present are we if we're constantly, even when we're at a concert, we're still watching it through lens, and that changes how we're absorbing information. I know, and we have and to And if adapt. you didn't tweet it, did it really happen? I know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Instagram. I barely on Facebook. I recently got myself a web uh, site because I feel Need like one. I have to, yeah. you know? But a website is like a business card yeah, online. Yeah, it sort is. Of thing. It is. That's um, a bit different. But people... 
people I know, friends of mine, are distressed by some of the social media that they receive. Oh, yeah. And, and some of the, uh, you know, the, the combativeness of social media and, you know, the Twitter sphere and the outrage and, you know, everyone's angry on social media. Um, they are. But I, but I know there's a lot of positive aspects to social media as well because you can communicate good things as well. Um, but I'm just a firm believer in go out and get out of your face house. Face. Go out and be a part of uh, your community. You know, go to some book readings. Go to a play. I go, agree. Go see things in live, in person. You know, get out of the house. That's what I do. That's how yeah. I find most of. That's when I was running events. I was. That's how I find people face right. to face. And, right. Uh, so is it making us narcissistic? It's making us very self-conscious. Navel, navel gazing. It's, it's, it's not even, it, we're selling, we're constantly having to sell ourselves. And I, I'm up at the point where I don't, I don't want an identity at all. People ask, well, how do you identify? I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual. Like, I know that that word is thrown around a lot, but I'm, I'm just a part of everything. Pale blue dot. Just a part... Yeah. Carl Sagan, you know, just, yeah. just um, if yeah. we actually look outside of ourselves, we'll see how little and in, in insignificant and we And I'm feeling are. that more and more as I get increasingly older and older. I've just, I'm just, well, I'm going to be gone. Well, We're going to be dust one day, you know. So what do things actually matter, you know? I, I try not to get angry as much as I used to, but, you know, anger and comedy go hand in hand. Yes. So there are certain things that... I use anger for is to like be, be a, an impulse for comedy but in my in my personal daily life I try my best to just let things slide so um, narcissistic I feel sorry for uh, like the younger generation I can't believe I'm talking like this but the younger generation yeah. because they have to navigate all this M you know, information, mirage, constantly you and know, this, this mirage, it's all, it's all false, you know, it is, it is, you know, is. I, I publish, therefore I am, I tweet, therefore I am, it's not, you are without this. And then they struggle, I find that they, they struggle to communicate one-on-one -on -one because everyone yeah. is so used exactly. to hiding behind a exactly. screen yeah. that they um, really can't get, it. They, they're losing, I think as a hu human society, we are losing the ability to get out there. And, one, and, and literally face-to-face -face meet people. You know, people are using dating websites. Actually, I think... They dating, are? No. Which ones? And can they help me? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Plenty of fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was David Tucker actually was telling me uh, in, within his classroom. He said, you know, all the people are on, you know, dating websites, social media, all this, obviously. Because he, uh, he just retired. He was a okay. professor for media, Steve uh, Ryerson as well after finishing work on uh, the nature of things and anyway he said you know right now something like this i'm paraphrasing a little story but he said to his class right now in this room there are you know and in this building there's people in your same socioeconomic status your same age category yeah. uh, in this room also similar interests obviously you're in a university you're in the media studies program whatever similar interests this and that you can literally just Meet right. your partner, anyone yeah. here right yeah. now. You are in yeah. the most ideal environment in that school setting, university setting. And people were raising their hands saying that they're, you know, basically that they're too afraid or shy to. And, and that the dating, you know, I don't know what the well, hookup one is called. But, you know, yeah. they want to you know, be able well, to think about their responses. And this well, and yeah, that. because it kind of supplies a, a safety mechanism. Yeah. You know, like it's a template. Yeah. That that you don't get when you're just kind of free ranging out in life. There's no, you know, we all have our constructs and our ideas and everything. But, you know, when you go online, you're following a certain template, a certain structure. And that is probably, especially if kids are raised with that, that's all they know. Exactly. So, the tech natives. Yeah. Now, the thing that disturbs me, though, and, um, and I think it's affecting broadcast media. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to know that this book, uh, Please Stand By, took place in the early 2000s mm -hmm. because especially with Facebook feeds I find mm -hmm. I don't think it should be called a news feed right. because a lot of those stories jokes the superimposed images are yeah. not 
real news, and it's not news anyway. If anything, I would call it a gossip feed if mm -hmm. I was naming it. Mm -hmm. But I think well, it's, it's opinion. gone. Yeah. Yeah, a lot but, of it's opinion. Yeah, but even just yeah. it's superimposed images and things. It's some of it's just comedy, like mm -hmm. yeah, you know, friend, you know. Uh, anyway, just it, it, you know, they're hilarious, but it's not real. But it's it is put forward as if it were a real story, right. like transgender man goes to, you know, salon to have his scrotum waxed. Where? <laughs> <laughs> and wow. it's like, you know, it's funny, that's but it's impressive. like, that should be on stand-up. No, and it was, he's right. refused and he sues. Okay. But oh, that well. didn't happen. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and literally goes and he, you know, and he yeah, sues. Yeah, people don't understand the real yeah, from the humorous. And, 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 yeah. and people aren't tuning in to network news anymore. I know, I know. Again, we were talking about institutions, so, mm -hmm. you know, of, of a certain generation. I, I was raised on CBC, I was raised on public television, and to this day, it's what I watch. Um, Same here. I was, if I'm going to watch, yeah. I watch the news, yeah. that's it. I was, uh, I was um, look at me, <laughs> look at me, I'm, Are you I'm obvious, cry? obviously <laughs> not wearing mascara. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, I was on, on a set. You know, I do, I do some uh, acting work, not not very much, but I was on the set um, a couple months ago and uh, saw this young woman, you know, just looking at her feed. And there was a big news story, and I was talking to her about it. And she said, oh, I, I really, I don't know. And I said, do you watch uh, public broadcasting or news? <laughs> she said, no, I get my news off Facebook. It, it was very, very matter of fact for her to yeah. say that. I, I've had a lot of people just say matter that of fact. Me, and it's like, that's not news. Anyway. But yeah, no, I get it off. It's <laughs> you know, sent right to me. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's and a then convenience. That's kind of a, a convenient, but also Nars says, no, it's sent right to me. Right. And yeah. it's kind of, um, my, you know, remember, mine, me, yeah, I, yeah. iPhone, yeah. iPad. I just think there's this yeah. narcissistic or self-centeredness, really, that's being marketed into a lot of products. I know, I know. And so how does that unify us? How does that turn I into we? Um, yeah, you know, like We Day. I, I know, I know they I know, try yeah, their best with that sort of uh, Vancouver, with, with that yeah. and, and bring people together. But um, it, the marketers of social media, they, they thrive on insecurity. If we didn't that have the seven deadly sins, we would not have capitalism. We would not have our economy. And you know, marketers and people who are selling product they know that they know how to push I, the that, buttons i have to tell you and i'm telling the world too i guess tell uh, my world. friends knows hi <laughs> <laughs> my friends do know like real friends but i've never had a face i've never had a facebook until recently with yeah, the magazine because you, but yeah, i still yeah. it's rt smag 905 mm -hmm. and i needed to have that in order to have a facebook page mm -hmm. and right. i just post stuff for the magazine on there yep. And um, I email marketing is my preferred medium, and mm -hmm. the website, and I send it to the Facebook page. But even with the lit cafe that I ran, everyone said, you need Facebook, you need Facebook. I said, no, I've been anti-Facebook my whole life, and it became a huge successful reading series with people as far as the UK and US coming to it. That's excellent. With a feature on even Kojiko Cable's 2013, in 2013 Arts Matters program. And, but the point is, is that I never, my, I, the thing that bothered me about Facebook, and you really tapped into this just a moment ago, is that the whole concept of friends, mm -hmm. you know, we are pack animals, human beings, and we need friends. Mm -hmm. It is, a, it is um, for survival. It mm -hmm. is a survival mechanism built into us. And so it, it's this, this platform that is built on, on telling, you know, you can make friends, you know, with each other. And it's completely, well, superficial, but it's just a, it's a, it's a house of cards. Because then all of a sudden you can get, you get un they're not your real friends right. anyway, but you get unfriended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that causes a huge ripple effect. You know, the smallest thing, you're unfriended, you're this, you're that, you're blocked. And people, I mean, online bullying, uh, uh, mental distresses, yeah. suicide rates, yeah. everything over this LinkedIn, you know, you can mm -hmm. just go, nope, you're no longer unfriended. And that is not how it actually works in the real world. You very few it times. Doesn't. I don't, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell the people I've uh, snubbed in the past. Oh. Joking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Unfriend. That's it. I'm not talking yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to... No. <laughs> no. If yeah. we have a disagreement, but no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just... I don't know. It upsets me that it, it's exploiting people's innermost need. That's business. That's business. So either, either you master it somehow, you realize what you're getting into, you know, you dance with the devil, you figure it out, you use it rather than have it use you, mm. 
or you just drop out. So I'm kind of like, I'm trying to navigate what I can in my own limited yeah. way. How can I get the word out about my book without boring the hell out of people who uh, are my friends who are in real life? Because most of the people who have liked my page, like a lot of them are personal friends. I can say, no, this person, no, no. Yeah, I, like I know everybody who is more or less like my page. I'm going to go like your page. All right, that would be good. Yeah. Because you probably have lots of contacts that I don't. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that's how it spreads, right? Yes. And that's why the model of advertising has changed so much. Like either, either you're Margaret Atwood or you're everybody else. So either like you're like top of the line 1% or you're, you know, little atoms all over the world trying to, you know, find your place and bounce off each other and how can we connect sort of thing and maybe we can grow something together. But, VJ um, Menon um, from The Star wrote a little hilarious piece on her... Uh, uh, a while back, about a year or two ago. But he just said she's won every award except the NHL Stanley Cup. <laughs> NHL, yeah. yeah. That's the <laughs> ultimate. Yeah. yeah, that's the ultimate. So she is right up there. But I don't think this book is boring. Now, you're going to read a little two, three-minute piece for Very us? quickly. Very quickly. All as right. I glance over at the time. Oh, yes. I have another appointment right now. Uh, is this the camera I'm looking I at? I believe so. Hello. I'm going to read you a story. A part, an excerpt from my book, Please Stand By. Uh, so uh, Suzanne Foley is the main character and uh, you know she's having a hard time dealing with all the change that's happening in the industry and her best friend suggests that she get a foster child to take her mind off her worries. So this is Suzanne's first letter to her foster child. Love from Canada. Dear Wellington, hi, my name is Suzanne Foley and I'm your new foster parent. I live in Canada, a very big country in North America. North America is north of Mexico, Central America, <laughs> and South America. <laughs> Canada is north of the United States of America. Maybe you've heard of Canada. I bet you've heard of the USA. It's hard to avoid. Please find and close a pack of hockey cards. I hope you like the Montreal Canadiens. Do they teach you about God? Which God? Uh, sorry, my eyes are terrible. Are the British out of Zambia for good? I looked up Zambia in the atlas and your national capital is Lusaka. Have you ever been there? Any good restaurants? Scratch that, I'm not supposed to compare my life with yours, sorry. The atlas also says that nearly half the population of Africa Africa is under the age of 15 years old. Wow, you must have a lot of kids to play with. Zambia also has a lot of forest. Well, that's what the atlas says. Has it been clear cut yet? Canada is a big country with four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Our winters are very cold and snowy and last a long time and most people don't like it. I do, the bleakness helps me focus. No birds chirping or flowers blooming to distract me. Do you have snow in Zambia? I hope my 20 bucks a month helps you out. I know it's not much, but I might be losing my job soon, so it's the best I can do. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> Although, where would you spend it? The Gap? A video arcade? Ha! So you have a sister. That's nice. I have three sisters and four brothers. I never see them. We all live very far apart from each other. That's okay, it doesn't make me sad. We need to go, we, need, we used to go skating and tobogganing, winter sports, when we were little. Sometimes all night because my parents didn't want us in the house. That's why I like winter, I had to. <laughs> what else? I hope you do well in school. I hope you have enough to eat and clean water to drink. I thank God every day that I have a roof over my head and food to eat. Okay, maybe not every day, but when I think about it or when I'm in trouble. I liked the picture of you I saw uh, at the Foster Plans for Kids office. You look like you mean business. Do you know that? You have your whole life ahead of you, Wellington. You have people around you who love you very much and they will help you grow up to be a fine young man. Are you named after the first Duke of Wellington? Hero of Europe who defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo? Or Wellington, New Zealand? Or the boot? 
<laughs> maybe you're named after your dad. Or maybe you're named just after you. Although I bet some Brit foisted your name on you. They just can't seem to let it go, can they? Don't get me wrong, I admire them enormously, but really, must their queen be our queen? You know what I'm saying? Ignore that last sentence. <laughs> well, I'd better go. I'm taking a trip to Los Angeles, California in the United States of America. I don't know why. I guess I won a contest. I'll send you a postcard from down there. I have to start packing. I go tomorrow. I don't know what to bring. Be good, Wellington. Know that I love you. Your foster parent, Suzanne. P.S. Call me your foster buddy instead. <laughs> I have never been a parent. <laughs> That's just a taste. That's just a taste. I know that didn't hit on any of the television aspect, but that's okay. The character is well-rounded, a well-rounded lunatic. Yes, and the the monologue style of the writing there came through quite strong. Yeah, it's a letter. So yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a letter, but yeah. it was um, no, it did come through the okay. the monotic, uh, the the lunatic aspect. Yeah. That's um, yeah, Good. the back and forth. It's an. It, I'm I'm excited to read the book. Great. Now, people can find it at Glenn McNally's book. Uh, ben McNally's yeah, ben uh, 363 Bay Street. Mm -hmm. It's also like Indigo and uh, Amazon. Amazon and all that. But, uh, you know, please support your local uh, bookseller. You know, if they don't have it, ask for it. Or it's in the libraries. It's, yeah. in, it's in the Toronto reference, uh, Toronto, like, library system. And Edmonton, I'm happy to say. That is and it's on, it's on hold in Edmonton. Like, it's, it's great. You know, like, they... People are waiting for it. Oh, and it yeah, because it takes place in Edmonton in the winter. It's um, it's, it's, it's it's very it's atmospheric. Strikes home. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and we're going to also when I put this interview up on the RT's website, I always put a link for the authors' books because most of my artists have either book or CD that come on here. So we'll put it on there too, and it takes people right to the page where they can purchase it online. Now you have some upcoming events, and you, tell us a little bit about about uh, Bright Lit Big City, because you launched it last year. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you very quickly. Very quickly. Very and quickly. we're going to put all the info on the screen where you can find Carolyn's book. And also the upcoming, you've got a number of upcoming dates. Yeah. Between now and January, you've got the official Jan launch January in Toronto. 9th, uh, which is a Thursday night, official launch uh, in Toronto for the book. It's surreal to me. It's really exciting. It's going to be amazing. Bright Lit Big City. Uh, every couple of months at Harut, mm -hmm. uh, Fine Ethiopian Cuisine, 2050 Danforth Avenue. The next one, Thursday, November 14th, 8 o'clock. Got six excellent writers, uh, three of whom are having de debut novels come Beautiful. out, so they're going to be reading from those novels. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to, and I'd like to stress to everyone that all of these events, including uh, Bright Lit Big City, can be found on the Artist Events page artistmagazine.com, go to the events page, so that's there. It's every second Thursday of every month, pretty uh, much. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and we're going to put your launch up there as well. Wow, great. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm going to be there. Yeah. I plan on it in That's January. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you and I met because you came to Bright Lit yeah, Big City. Yeah, I think it was you, opening you, night. Yeah, you came. And you it was physical. a full house. Yeah. It's a large restaurant, great yep. food at yep. High Root, and it was a full house. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was great people. And, uh, yeah, I want to say, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, this was our guest, Carolyn Bennett, not the MP, not the, the author, MP. comedian, uh, writer, yeah. and maybe the MP in, <laughs> <laughs> in another life. In another life. Thank you for joining us, Thanks. Carolyn. It was lovely to have you on the show. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. And everyone, check out her website, too, at Carolyn Bennett. WriterComic.com. It's a mouthful, but... It's on, the it's on the screen. And we'll see you again next month. Take care. Mm -hmm.